After having thoroughly enjoyed the Mecca Fair Hanofa last year, I was greatly looking forward to enjoying the largest congregation of this type in Germany once again. This time, I was able to convince Demin to take a weekend off from generating wormholes to another dimension at CERN by baiting him with a chance to meet Eben Upton, who was also scheduled to be here this year. But before we get to that part, let's make our way through some of this year's interesting highlights. The 3D text manipulation on this POV display must have certainly involved matrices, which have been the subject of my fascination ever since I had to grudgingly deal with them in high school. Why should numbers be arranged in this format, and why is multiplication defined in such a seemingly arbitrary fashion? These questions of mine went willingly unanswered in high school. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, a polymath with a strong Hanover connection, not only created the first mechanical calculator capable of performing all four basic mathematical operations, but also played around with matrices. This line from the Wikipedia page about matrices provides some insight about how and why they came to be. The arbitrary seeming operations were defined based on mathematical utility, and the present system of matrices is designed to be the most applicable to diverse operations. That was quite the rabbit hole, but I'm glad I was able to get some of the trauma inflicted by a decade and a half of math education out of my system. For my efforts at trying to break one of their test prints, I was rewarded with a filament sample from Nobofil, whose name is actually derived from something other than what I imagined. Their PETG prints as impeccably as any old PLA on my Prusa Mini. I don't really have much to say about the filament, which could be taken as a compliment since it gave me no trouble at all. Of course, in return for the sample, the least I could do to return the favour is leave a link and a QR code to their Instagram page, where new followers are currently an extremely welcome commodity. What interested me more than the ever ubiquitous Bamboo Lab is this custom build, with a display and font which I found very attractive. On the theme of 3D printed things, I was more than eager to try this Nerf compatible blaster, specially designed to use parts from hardware stores in Germany. One of the questions I get asked most often is what the channel name means, and the answer to that is that a 12 year old me wanted to collect and review Nerf blasters, and may or may not have been influenced by other YouTubers. The name itself is inspired by CNN, replacing the cable with Nerf and adding an India to the back, because, of course. Childhood interests extended to aviation. I have fond memories of trying to convince my parents to print out the entire 600-page SR-71 Blackbird flight manual. That never ended up happening, but someone else I know might find this model cool. I clearly remember expressing disdain about a similar prototyping concept last year, but the neatness of this system convinced me to upgrade my feelings to mixed. What I have absolutely no mixed feelings about is the Apollo program, still being revered today in the form of this 3D printed Saturn V at the Recycling Fabric booth, who just so happened to be my go-to filament manufacturers and recyclers in Germany. I was able to convince Dimin to try some and also save some of his 3D printing waste to send to them. Well, if only I had this when I first moved here, There's something about this telex system that makes me regret not adding more LEDs to my rack. Oh wait, there's a good reason for not doing so, which I will explain at some point in the distant future. No idea why this BR218 is painted in NS colors, but let's roll with it. In the shady corners of the hall, the voltnuts at the PTB stand had some more of their treasures on display. At Velenkino, the organized chaos of the guts of an old Tektronix oscilloscope was put on display. We also got a demonstration of a 7834 analog storage oscilloscope, which represents the peak of analog oscilloscope design. And finally, what is, in my opinion, the star of today's show, the Pico 2, which was released just a week before the Maker Fair, where they were also being sold, which confirmed my hunch and made the early trip worth it. A Make Fair video wouldn't be complete without an Eben Upton interview, which, given the fact that he's going to be here every year, might turn into a yearly tradition. This year, I had a list of questions prepared 
And Eben's answers were very insightful about the philosophy of Raspberry Pi microcontrollers as being cheap computing power for complicated projects. Um, you can buy a lot of op amps. You can buy a lot of external op amps. Of course, the difference in price between an op twenty three fifty and an STM thirty two. Yeah, a lot of op amps. And also answered some complaints about certain design choices. Absolutely, go buy a clone that, that has <laughs> USB C and a mounting hole. Uh, you know, that's fine. Um, Going full circle. I got to show Eben the Pro Pico. Oh, cute. That's fun. As usual, a link to the full interview can be found in the video description. With that came Maker Faire Hanover 2024 to an end. Two days of incredible fun. But that's only half the story. Dimin will cover the rest on his channel. Pretty depressing sounding inverter to be honest. Damn the ICE.